Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? I was going to try to not be in a mood today, but that's just not going to happen. Um, I am what I am. Um, there's a guy who texted me last night. He said Shane, Gor his name is Shane. Gor oh, I can't even pronounce it. It's a million letters. It starts with a G. He said, please go all red face Italian Matt tomorrow on the Saints. I didn't want to do that. I really don't want to do that. Um, some of y'all think it's an act when I do that. It's not. It's just I intend to have a measured approach and give you insightful commentary when and where applicable. Um, but I'm emotional. I'm a fan. Love the team. Been a fan my entire life. Never hide that. Um, and I try to be impartial in my analysis. And I was really sitting today at my desk and giving a lot of thought as I was prepping today for how I wanted to approach today because I don't want to be part of an echo chamber. I don't like that in sports media. It's the worst thing about sports media is when people just parrot other things they hear from other people without actually allowing for independent thought. I hate that. Um, and so I thought a lot today about how I can say something that's different than what everybody else is saying. And I was going to try to be measured. I'm standing out in the hallway and Musso walks up and the, the second I open, I open my mouth, I just go into this like expletive lace tirade about how I want to punch Dennis Allen in the face. I am who I am, okay? Um, I don't really want to punch Dennis Allen in the face. He seems like a very nice man. I'm sure he's a very good man as well. But I'm just, I'm fed up. I'm over it. I'm completely over it. I'm, I am, I'm pissed off. I'm, I'm, I, I've reached my end. The only good thing about the Saints gagging away that game on Monday Night Football is it's one more nail in Dennis Allen's proverbial coffin as the Saints head coach. I don't know how you come back from this now. You go into the bye, maybe they fire him now. Probably not. Probably wait it out for the rest of the season. But my God, the have you seen the freaking probability chart? Have you looked at the probability chart from last night's game? With three minutes to go and the Saints up 13 points? It's like 100% Saints win probability. And then, I mean, impossibly... I don't even know how this could even possibly happen when you look at the probability chart. Look, pull it up, Paul, if you want. Here it is. Like, Here's the probability chart. The Saints at this point in the game were like at 100% probability. They were right at 100% probability. Like, I, it's, I can't even make it get that close. It was just the, it's like they're going to win the game. They're like 100% probability right here. It's at 97.6%. It's at 97.6% when the Saints had... First and ten at their at their own thirty five yard line, and somehow they piss it away. It, I, it and I know how. It's because there's no fire in this team. There's no fight. Nobody gets in anybody's face. Nobody cares. It's because you have you have a substitute teacher at the front of the room. Yes, players have to make plays, y'all. Players have to make plays. Of course, that is a reality in this. They're professional football players. They're paid. Chris Olave dropped the ball deep in Bucks territory that would have netted the Saints at least a field goal. First drop of the season, bad time for it. Mark Ingram with about six minutes to go is running to the sideline. All he has to do is take one more step forward. He gets the first down. The Saints can chew up at least two more minutes off the game clock. He goes out of bounds a yard short. Well, he was hurt. Shut up! Get a half a yard. You're running at the sticks. You've been in the league for a decade. Get the first down. Jarvis Landry. I love Juice. Probably my favorite LSU player ever. Dalton actually put a nice ball on him. He had to make sort of a one-handed catch, but soft hands, we've seen Jarvis do it a million times. Couldn't come up with it. Scores on the play. They get a field goal instead. Third and 17 play over the middle. Tough catch for Taysom. He got popped by two guys. Could have had it. Didn't. Guys got to make plays. They didn't. But when a team consistently makes losing plays, you play for a losing coach with a losing mentality. And that's Dennis Allen. I saw this on Twitter earlier today from a guy named Jeff Asher, who runs a, a, 
a, an account that, which is Crimealytics. He says he's a former FBI guy. He's got a verified account for whatever that's worth now. He could have paid for the, the blue check. I don't even care. He's the co-founder of AH Datalytics from New Orleans. Anyway, seems credible. The guy's freaking in the FBI. He said facing fourth and one or two while tied or leading. Again, so short yarded situations, fourth down, one and two, tied or leading. Sean Payton, over the last three years, 2019, 2021, went for it 20 of 23 times. Went for it. Fourth and one. Or two, tied or leading, Sean Payton went for it 20 of 23 times. Dennis Allen's faced that situation five times this year. He's kicked five field goals. He is not confident enough in himself, his team, his ability to make tough calls in tough spots, so he takes the road less traveled. Or excuse me, he takes the easy path out. He's not a leader. Great defensive coordinator. Really good defensive mind. Flummox Tom Brady, you led... You held Tom Brady and the Bucks to three points over 57 minutes. Think about this. You held the greatest quarterback ever on the road to three points over 57 minutes, and you lost the game. Why? Because you have a weak head coach who keeps kicking short field goals over and over again. Won't go for it. And then, and then you punt twice in Tampa territory. Go win the game. How about after Tampa scored? So Mark Ingram skirts out of bounds because he's Mark Ingram. I'm going to talk more about him later. I've tweeted something about him being a losing player, and a lot of y'all didn't like that on Twitter. Oh, I'm getting to that later. For sure getting to that. And some of y'all ain't going to like when I say it now, but y'all gonna have to, y'all, you will have to stare truth in the face and disagree with fact. Mark Ingram runs out of bounds. So anyway, you give them the ball, 44-yard penalty because of a PI. They score. Now it's 13-10 to 10, or 16-10. to 10. You get... Get the ball back. Hey, let's go milk some clock. What do you do? First down. Run it. Timeout. Second down. Oh, this will trick them. Let's bring everybody in tight and go to a one-receiver route and run play action on it. Who's the one receiver? Kurt Merritt, the guy who just was activated yesterday. Not your first-round pick, Chris Olave. Not Jarvis Landry. Not anybody that might actually strike fear into that defense to make you think you're going to throw it to them. They put Kurt Merritt out there. And Andy Dalton gets sacked. Mm. How about the third and one play after Mark Ingram skirted out of bounds? You're on a quick slant to Marquez Callaway? You realize he hadn't been active since the, the Rams game? Not Jarvis. Not your first round pick, Chris Olave. N- not, not, get, not a run with Taysom Hill. No, let's throw a slant to Marquez Callaway. That's the, that's the ticket. Yep, that's the ticket. Losers, man. Losers make losing decisions and losing plays. It's why you lose games. Again, I'm not calling these people losers as human beings. Don't misunderstand me. I'm talking about, from a leadership standpoint, Dennis Allen has a losing mentality. He is not a winner. He is not aggressive enough. He's not confident enough in his ability to, or his team to go make plays to go win games. That's why, as a head coach, Dennis Allen is 12-37. and 37. That is fact. That is data. It's what it is. Dennis Allen is 12-37 and 37 as a head football coach in the NFL. He is not a winner, and he never will be. And if there's one positive after watching that last night, which makes you want to throw up, not in your mouth, but projectile vomit at your television, even for a team that was 4-8, and eight, and knowing if you just finish that game, you're one game out of first place in the loss column going into your bye, and Tampa's got to go play San Francisco. You could be coming out of your bye with a chance to be the division leader. But instead, you can't make enough plays to go win a stinking game that you dominated with a win probability with three minutes left. He's at 97%, and somehow you lose it. Do you realize I saw this on SportsCenter last night? As far as probability, last night, the only game in his career that Tom Brady has won where the win probability was less was the 28 to 3 game in the Super Bowl. It's the only one. The good news is the Bucks put the Saints out of their misery. The Bucks put this Saints season out of their misery. Even at 4 and 8, we were legitimately still sitting here going, "Well, win tonight, you're a game out of first in the loss column." Now that's over. It's over. You got four games to play. You have to win out. The Bucs would have to lose out. It ain't happening. You're, you're done. You're done. 
And now that the Saints have been put out of their misery, it is time for Gail Benson to put Dennis Allen out of his misery as the Saints head coach. It is over. If Dennis Allen is back as the head coach of the New Orleans Saints next year, that would show an egregious, an egregious lack of vision and direction for this organization. We saw Mrs. Benson do it with the Pelicans, with Stan Van Gundy after one year. It's time. And again, this is in hindsight being 2020, y'all. It's, it, I am sitting here telling you that I understood when they hired Dennis Allen what they were doing. And I was okay with it. Hey, look, great run of success. Let's keep the culture. Let's keep the foundation. You keep Pete Carmichael. You keep Dennis Allen. I get it. I got what they were doing. I got it. It made sense. It didn't work. And now it's over. It's over. Cut bait. Move on. And whoever you hire next is going to take this job knowing full well they have a rebuild on their hand. Much like Sean Payton did when he inherited a team after the Katrina year in 2005 when they were 3-13. and Understanding what he was walking into. And that's what the next coach will do. They're not inheriting a team with a great roster and a cap situation. Quarterback's bad. It's a bad situation. Whoever takes his job is taking a bad job. But whoever it is, is going to have the opportunity to prove they can win. Because Dennis Allen's already proven he can. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.